Today, Norway tightens mortgage lending. Hello again, I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to our latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Household debt in Australia is around 190%, which is high by any standard. But Norway wins the award with the most indebted households at 224%. And this is a structural risk for Norway's banks. So it's interesting to compare the measures taken there with Australian regulation, which appears here to be several years behind the pace. In fact, last Tuesday, the Norwegian Ministry of Finance extended until the 31st of December 2019 its strict regulations on mortgage underwriting standards, which were introduced in January 2017 and scheduled to expire on the 30th of June 2018. In addition, the Ministry decided to maintain the stricter Oslo-specific measures regarding loan-to-value ratios on secondary homes of 60%, rejecting the Norwegian Financial Services Authority's March 2018 proposal to remove the Oslo-specific measures. Extending these measures past their scheduled expiration will dampen home price inflation and contain borrower leverage a structural risk for Norway's banks. The proposal maintains the maximum loan-to-value for home equity credit lines at 60%, the 85% loan-to-value cap on mortgages, and the limit on borrowers' aggregate debt at five times gross annual income. It caps the portion of mortgages that do not comply with the notional applicable LTV limit at 10%. However, the Ministry decided against the FSA's suggestion of eliminating the existing LTV limit of 60% for secondary homes located in Oslo, as well as applying nationwide the Oslo-specific cap on the portion of mortgages non-compliant with the LTV ratio of 8%. By maintaining the 8% cap on the portion of non-compliant mortgages only in Oslo and not extending it nationwide, the Ministry has reduced the possibility that exceptions to the LTV rule for national lending would become concentrated in Oslo. Norwegian banks are retail-focused, with mortgages accounting for almost 50% of their total lending. In Australia, of course, it's 64%. The extension of the regulation until December 2019 is a step forward towards improving mortgage underwriting standards by containing borrower leverage. Household debt reached a record 224% of disposable income in December 2017, far above that of other Nordic countries. And it's expected to remain close to these levels over the next 12 to 18 months. Substantial household debt remains a structural risk for Norway's banks. However, a preliminary analysis by Norway's central bank has shown that the introduction of the maximum debt-to-income ratio requirement in 2017 has resulted in lower debt growth, particularly in areas with a high share of highly leveraged home buyers. Requirements on loan amortisation also support reductions of loan-to-value ratios in more seasoned loans, maintaining Oslo-specific measures in combination with our expectation of interest rate hikes will limit retail credit growth in the Oslo metropolitan area, particularly as it relates to investment properties and highly leveraged individuals. During 2018, house prices have grown 4.5% after falling 4.2% in 2017 from a peak in March 2017. However, the extension of stricter underwriting measures, along with expectations of higher interest rates after seven years of cuts, and the completed construction of a large number of new dwellings by the northern autumn, will likely restrain house price inflation over the next 12 to 18 months. I think there are things here that the Australian regulators should be learning from. As always, if you like what you've seen here today, please like the post and add a comment or a question. I read them all. If you want to join the growing band of subscribers who receive alerts when we release new posts, do subscribe now by hitting the subscribe bell. 
And if you've already subscribed, many thanks. I really appreciate your support and participation. I'm Martin North, the Principal Analyst at Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.